Welcome back to Wealthology. For today's video, we will show you how Warren Buffett explains when to sell a stock. Let's get started. It can be difficult to decide whether or not to sell a stock. Do you sell it because the price has increased and you want to make a profit? Do you sell it because the price has dropped and you want to minimize your losses? Maybe you should sell it because it's been flattening while all your buddies are making money with Bitcoin. Fortunately, Omaha's Oracle and securities master Warren Buffett has us covered on this subject. The world's greatest investor has spoken on the art of selling on several occasions. Before we get into the three scenarios in which you should sell a stock, let's talk about why the character, in the beginning, executes his selling incorrectly. It's because he's fixated on the amount he paid. Buffett says this. Now, one of the important things in stocks is that the stock does not know that you own it. You know, you have all these feelings about it, you know, and, and you remember what you paid, you know, you remember who told you about it, all these little things, you know, and it, you know, it, it doesn't give a damn. <laughs> it just, it just sits there and it, it, it uh, you know, you, a stock at 50, somebody's paid 100, they feel terrible, somebody else paid 10, they feel wonderful, all these feelings. And it, it has no impact whatsoever. And so it's, it's so if the fact that a stock has gone up, down, or is simply moving sideways shouldn't influence your choice to sell, then what should? The first situation when Warren Buffett wants to sell is this. Number one, when something better shows up. The first 20 years of investing for me, or maybe more, my decision to sell almost always was based on the fact that I found something else I was dying to buy. I mean, I sold stocks at you know, at three times earnings to buy stocks at two times earnings 45 years ago. Because if you invest in the stock of company A, you cannot invest in the stock of company B. This can lead to some difficult decisions. You may have to leave a firm you adore in exchange for something even better. Here's an excerpt from Buffett's 1959 letter to his partners in Buffett Partnership Limited. When he left his job at Commonwealth Thrust to join Sanborn Maps mapping firm, we were successful in identifying a rare circumstance late in the year where we could become the largest holding at an appealing price. So we sold our Commonwealth block for $80 per share. The buyer of the shares at $80 can expect to do well over time. However, the relative undervaluation of $80 with an inherent value of $135 is very different from a price of $50 with an underlying value of $125 and it appeared that our cash would be better used in the circumstance that replaced it. If you followed Warren Buffett's recent advice, here's where you might have gone wrong with your selling, even if he expected subpar investment returns. He would not sell his wholly owned company today. It's a little misleading to take Warren Buffett's advice that his preferred holdings terms is forever. He emphasizes the personal ties he's been able to create with the managers of Berkshire Hathaway subsidiaries above making a few more percentage of returns these days rather than holding forever and to break off relationships with people I like and people that have joined me because they think it's a permanent home to do that simply because somebody waves a big check at me it would be like selling one of my children because somebody waved a big check so I, I won't do that and I want to tell my partners I won't do it so that they're not disappointed in me the Berkshire Hathaway Owner's Manual was first presented in an annual shareholder letter to Berkshire shareholders back in 1983. But this thinking of Buffett's goes further back than that. Have a look at what he said in a partnership letter from 1968. As I have mentioned before, we cannot make the same sort of money out of permanent ownership of controlled businesses that can be made from buying and reselling such businesses or from skilled investment in marketable securities. Nevertheless, they offer a pleasant long-term form of activity when conducted in conjunction with high-grade, able people at satisfactory rates of return. After an early 1960s experience with Dempster Meal Manufacturing, Buffett's pensions for reselling enterprises began to shift. 
Buffett was reviled by the entire community for purchasing their major firm and then eliminating costs and employees to make it lucrative for a sale. However, if we look to his 1961 partnership letter, we can see what Buffett would advise smaller investors to do. Our bread and butter business is buying cheap assets and selling when the undervaluation is corrected. Another situation in which Warren Buffett would sell a stock is this. Number two, when the economic characteristics of a business change in a major way. Our inclination is not to sell things unless we get really discouraged perhaps with the management or we think the economic characteristics of the business change in a big way. I mean, and that happens. Let's look at a few examples of major changes which have cost Warren Buffett to sell historically. Just recently in 2020, he sold his stakes in a few of the major airline companies, noting that the world has changed for airlines due to the coronavirus. Buffett sold one of his most major investments, the newspaper The Washington Post, in 2014. Buffett commented about how the world has changed changed for newspapers over the years and how the Post didn't have quite the same competitive advantages when Berkshire bought it in 1973. He finally decided to let it go. Then there's Buffett's investment in the Tesco supermarket business. Buffett doesn't say why, but he had a disagreement with the company's management, which led to him selling his stake. By 2014, he has left the role with a slight net loss. Fundamental changes are quite rare. Buffett alludes to this in his 1997 annual letter to Berkshire Hathaway's shareholders, saying selling great firms on scary news is always a foolish idea. Finally, while Buffett advocates having a concentrated portfolio, there are times when you must sell or, well, reduce down. Number 3. When a single holding gets too big Yes, the older adage about not placing all your eggs in one basket is correct, but you don't have have to follow it to the letter. The more money you have in your portfolio, the more you can invest in a single stock. Consider that in 1967, when Warren Buffett was managing more than $500 million, he had 40% of his partnership's money in American Express. The stock eventually brought him over the 40% limit, so he reduced his holdings to maintain some semblance of diversification. By the way, Warren Buffett's investment in American Express is only his fourth largest. What you pay for a stock means nothing to it. A good question to ask is, would I still want to buy the stock today if I didn't already possess it? If not, you should probably consider selling. The desire to keep a stock and the desire to buy more of it are not synonymous, but they are strongly related. They are not the same because selling stock to buy something else entails paying taxes on gains as well as transaction charges. As a result, there is a small space between the buy more and sell zones. This is known as the do-nothing zone, which is overvalued in today's investing market. If you've discovered something better, something fundamental has changed, or a single holding has grown too huge, sell it. So what did you learn from Warren Buffett's stock selling advice? Which of his advice did you find particularly useful? Please let me know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe to our channel for more. Thank you for taking the time to watch. See you on our next video.